Got okay. It. Yes, I think we may be recording. Hey, yeah. Can you? I'm just really worried that I'm the only one with a red dot. Anyhow, we'll go on anyhow. I'm pretty sure we're recording. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, viewers. Thank you. Uh, first off, um, to our very special guest today is Genevieve Ristova. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Perfectly. Perfectly. <laughs> Me too. And of course, Clive Levyasoya of the Sofia Globe, the place to get all your Bulgarian news in English language. How are you doing, Clive? Uh, enjoying the uh, wonderful, beautiful spring weather uh, as seen from inside. Absolutely correct. So, um, on today's show, after we've just had some problems getting uh, Genevieve online, and uh, we're going to be talking about SME, small businesses and medium-sized businesses. What should we be doing? Uh, what can we be doing to make the most of our time whilst we're quarantined? And I hope this content is good for wherever you are in the world, wherever you're watching this. And I hope you come up with some uh, ideas or this help promote some ideas because I'm going to kick off to say I think it's going to be entrepreneurial activity that helps get us out of all of this. So we're not going to be really talking about doom and gloom and the issues obviously we've currently got. We've got enough on that. Uh, we will be referring, I think, and Clive will be putting us straight on what the Bulgarian government might be offering to do to assist. But I want to just kick off uh, with Genevieve just to say, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you established uh, the company with uh, Anelia Kasab Kasabova, I think. Kasabova, yeah. Yep. Right. Uh, was that around about 2004, something like that? Yeah, it was 2002, so it was Two like, yeah, but this, uh, just the registration, because the real work really started 2004 five. so uh, you're correct. Okay, so I've known Genevieve for, what, six, seven years maybe, and yeah. we last saw each other on a late night plane back from Barcelona last year, this time last year. <laughs> and uh, Genevieve is actually quite famous if you don't know her. Uh, she's championing uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, I believe uh, you or your company have been voted the uh, uh, Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2010. Yeah, and uh, many right. awards for, um, uh, this is a furniture, contract furnishing, uh, company from hotels to car showrooms uh, to retail a lot uh, and really quite a big company now uh, and, uh, so do check out uh, and learn more on uh, ligna-group.com um, so let's go straight into it uh, my first question Genevieve is what's the impact on your business how are you coping and what are the challenges you're facing uh, thank you for the question and you know I when you ask me how I am doing today I told you I'm happy right yeah. so and I think uh, it's probably you know many people say you know you need to stay positive you need to be positive and maybe it's a little bit you know that kind of message you know everybody's fed up okay tell me give me something I mean don't just tell me that you need to be positive but but it is about the attitude because if we don't have the right attitudes and really the optimistic positive attitudes, nobody will do it instead of us. And nobody was prepared. I mean, okay, I don't know anybody, I cannot recall, you know, anybody in my network that was prepared for such crisis because we knew that probably there will be a recession sometime because of the economic, you know, cycle, etc. But this really took us by surprise and this is the moment when you need to be entrepreneurial and you need to be creative. So in a, in, a, in a times like this, I mean, leaders need to lead the others. They need to show by example. So what happened in, in our small you know, environment, like in, because we are in the furniture business and we are in a contract furniture business, uh, which means we are mainly furnishing hotels outside Bulgaria. Sorry, my phone rang. Sorry about this. Hello. Yeah. Hello. We got uh, it. So we, yeah, we are outside Bulgaria. We are furnishing hotels outside Bulgaria. 
And you know, hospitality industry is the one who is suffering a lot nowadays mm -hmm. because tourism and everything. So the business travelers, you know, all the uh, aircrafts they are on the the fleet is on the ground, uh, etc. So, and in term, terms like this, what we've done first is to check everything what's going on in our projects, and to send a message, a very clear message to our partners. Guys, we will do our best. We will be there for you in order to build trust. So we didn't panic or we didn't just say, oh, Christ, well, now what's going on? We're going to die because I think this is really very unhealthy. So we checked all our partners, what, you know, all, all our projects, how are we doing, what are we doing, etc. And uh, then we send them a letter. We check our supply chain about, you know, the producers, how are they doing? And uh, we were very happy that our colleagues are, you know, they were really on, you know, they were very on the word and they said, okay, don't worry. As, as, as long as you're giving us orders, we can keep producing. Because in terms like this, in times like this, it's very important not to stop the production. You know, the production needs to keep going because the most difficult think is to restart a production process. So we calm down the producers, we calm down the suppliers, we took all the precautions, so we sent all the people in the dangerous age groups home, and they were really on tears, you know, they said, okay, we need to look after you guys, you go on a paid leave, leave. you know, we're not sucking you, and we're not saying you are not uh, worthy anymore, so take care, we need to look after you, because this is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. so because People are the most important value in and resource in each company. So I, I, I really don't understand all these businesses who just first get, they, they just got rid of their people because they will be suffering afterwards. Uh, you cannot just get rid of your people because, okay, I cannot pay. I mean, you, there's always a way, but there is not always a will. So you need really to have the right will just to see what is important for you, what, what, what is valuable for you, and to keep it. So, because I think the market, especially the labor market, was totally crazy in Bulgaria. There was no people. I mean, we couldn't find a cleaner. Mm. Yeah. Forget about a manager or a designer or, a, you know, I mean, it's a cleaner. Or, mm. yeah. So, I think this could be one of the positive impacts, that after this, there will be many people available on the... <laughs> on the at the market, so we're quite happy with this day, maybe because we can get we can, can get more good people. But I'll give you some some other examples. So when we stood up, me and Adelia in front of the people, I said, "Guys, we will do. I mean, even if, I mean, we need to pay extra, but we want to keep you, and we want to keep you with us. We are very happy with you, and so don't worry, you'll be paid. So we will survive, and we definitely let's 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 think how to." how to benefit out of it, not just survive, how to benefit out of it. And and our marketing now department is, is mad. I mean, they're so busy because we are contacting people, like the cold clients, right, just to tell them we are there uh, for you. We are just promoting new services, like we are doing more 3D renders, we are doing more remote services for them, like interior design, not just production. Uh, we also um, develop some products like screens, you know, these screens yes. in front of you, right? Yes, yes. For the, all the trade objects, so for the shops, for the petrol stations, you know, when, you know, our pharmacy, when you need to buy products or the courier services. And we, there is a first sale to Austria last week of those screens, right? Wow, very good. And to Romania is coming next week, right? So this yeah. is just a sheer product proactivity so let's see how to be innovative and creative what else to do okay so this is point number one i'm going to stop you there really if i may for a second to come in and uh, give some of my experience because uh, uh, you may or may not know i'm 50 percent shareholder in in um uh, not just app factory here uh, but uh, also zavadenia the uh, uh, listings and uh, table booking bulgarian website and app and of course, that sector has been completely devastated. I mean, people one day were operational and the next day they were not, if you had a, a venue, a restaurant, uh, pretty much. Uh, and um, in these sort of situations, 
I think it's because not every business can continue to make furniture. They, some sectors are closed by law. A bit unfair, you could say, but that's the world we're living in. And so what we've done, and I think every business can do what really what you've done as well, is we contacted them and said, look, we've got some tips for you guys. Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts from the US and Australia and other places in, in that sector. Uh, to hear what people are up to, you know, how, can you up, get some curbside? Have you thought about delivery, but your own delivery, get your family to deliver? Have you thought about a loyalty scheme uh, to keep people loyal? Have you thought about promoting that you're local? People want to keep their local place open and support the local community. I think we're going to see more of that. So I'm just throwing out yeah. some ideas that, that, that I picked up from elsewhere. These are not from myself, uh, but we've been throwing out to our uh, customers who are uh, mainly restaurant owners. Uh, in, in Bulgaria who are having a pretty torrid time of course uh, so I think the first point is to see what you can offer communicate okay. yep. and then see what you can offer because what we can offer is uh, a free we're offering free uh, um, uh, listing so that you can put your menu and that people can order a uh, takeaway from the app yeah and the great thing about that is they don't have to put up their price 30% to cover one of the aggregators <laughs> that take a huge margin and frankly you run at a loss because 30% is your margin that you know you need. Um, so uh, we're, we're trying to educate uh, many of the venues out there. They, there is a hope, don't despair, but you're going to have to innovate and I think that's the point you're saying is yeah. that there's, there's an opportunity here. And dare I say it, and I know this is tough to say, it, but it, it's going to be survival of the fittest. And uh, so you're yes. going to have to really innovate. You're going to have to really think. You're going to have to really communicate and use this time whilst we're all at home, uh, most of us are at home, uh, to really think and educate ourselves. Uh, and, and as I say, you don't have to think at inspiration from uh, there's gonna, you're going to wake up one morning and you've found this earth-changing uh, ch idea. <laughs> um, don't rely on that, please. Um, I spend a lot of time, as I say, using podcasts, uh, YouTube videos and all that stuff uh, to see what other people are doing around the world. Um, so that was my first point. And then I think you're talking about your, your, you deal uh, internationally, I mean, particularly in, in the EU, I believe. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah. So I think um, if your market is local, uh, how about expanding it a bit to some other countries? Um, which you, you did to, to survive initially. You started probably with a few projects, I'm guessing, locally in Bulgaria, but you very quickly went to Germany and then the UK and, uh, um, you know, you, you, you expanded to the size that you are. But um, I think people need to just look at what they can do themselves and then look at some of the other markets that are out there and not necessarily, if, they, if you're based locally in Bulgaria, then great. Or the other way around, if you're watching this, in another country, maybe you think now's the time. Uh, you've got a laptop. Um, you know, if you don't want to be paying high rent in central London or virtually anywhere uh, in, in Germany, in the UK, and France, and maybe you want to come and hang out somewhere here in Bulgaria. Uh, there's plenty of nice places to do it. I think uh, uh, Clive yeah, sure. and yourself would agree. So that that's maybe an idea as well. Um, okay, we're just keeping on this communication piece, we have the king of communication with us Clive <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> uh, Clive has actually also had his business impacted by one of his uh, major supporters advertisers uh, had having to stop their support and mm -hmm. in a way that's why we're having this because I said to Clive what can I do and I said well I'll tell you what I think I can do <laughs> and that's uh, encourage you to set up a patron account as you know patron is very popular and now around the world and uh, already Clive has uh, moved off of uh, zero and we encourage you to support independent media so Clive is not influenced by any any p political party or any vested interest or any uh, he has a few advertisers but I don't think that's any real impact at all on the content um, so Clive do you have any uh, thoughts now I know we're right in the middle of the thick of a very difficult time but um, in, in terms of uh, media and, and what might work there well, I think, you know, one obvious thing is the very technology that we're using at the moment. Uh, we know that in the course of the, the, the crisis, uh, a number of, of platforms like this have been made available for people so that they can continue their business, so they can uh, educate, etc., etc., the children. Um, 
now that everybody's seeing the virtue of this kind of communication, because you you literally communicate from your home or your home office or perhaps your office, um, <clears throat> and there will come a time that this won't be free anymore. Uh, but businesses and and individuals, I'm sure, will see the virtue of, it, of actually investing in platforms like this. Uh, I also am very fond of making the point that now you're not travelling to a meeting. Um, it's not necessary to you know get in your car or plane or go somewhere just to be face to face. You can do it like this. Uh, so it, it's uh, more efficient in terms of time, uh, and of course nicer for the environment. So I think that'll be one pivot. Uh, the other one that I can I can reasonably predict is um, you're quite correct in saying that the future is in SMEs, it is. Uh, but I think we will see more building of alliances uh, between SMEs, uh, working perhaps in the same sector or cross-platform different sectors, uh, people still keeping their own, you know, mom and pop shop kind of business, but working in alliance with others. Uh, those are two, I think, perfectly obvious trends. I'll bring in Genevieve there because actually one of the things I, bit, I seem to recall that helped propel your business and the help was the cluster, uh, the, the, the furniture cluster set up here in, uh, in Bulgaria. And so this idea of um, a cluster or collaboration or grouping, I don't like the word association so much, but um, maybe some thoughts on that point uh, uh, that may be helpful for other people. If, they, if, they're not work, if they're not collaborating with other people, what could they do to, to do that? Yeah, thank you, Hans. So I, I always believed in uh, collaboration. I think and co collaboration probably and partnership is the main words because, especially nowadays, we need to help each other. And I can see it even on the streets that I think we get we got better, maybe nicer, you know, to the others. We start we we start being more considered, which being Bulgarian. You know, you've been in the environment, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm so pleased to see that we are helping each other and we care about each other more than we used to be before. Because I think in this crazy environment where we used to be when we were just rushing from task to task without even thinking because we just job needs to be done. And as you, as you, as you said to us, now there is more time to think. There, there is more time to analyze. And as Clive said, I think it helps us being more efficient and being more productive. And it's, it's really important to try to help each other because together we really could be stronger and we can, we can, we can just make it together. And I'll give you an example. In the Creative Hub, Missio 23, because the latest cluster is the Creative Cluster we set up, and uh, one of our very big projects is Eurovision, you know, Bulgaria. It was, we managed to bring back the Eurovision in Bulgaria. But I'm sure that you attempted to give me this question at the end, you know. Uh, yes, I've got it down as a question uh, <laughs> to talk about Eurovision. Let's go straight into it. I mean, I love Eurovision. I've oh. uh, been brought up on it, uh, something to look forward to every single year. And uh, we've got two people who've got um, connections. Uh, Genevieve, tell me your Eurovision no, story. But, yeah, I'll just talk, yeah, back uh, to the creative. So the yes, creative absolutely. Cup, because the creative cup was the driver to the Eurovision. But in the creative cup, I'll give you an example. We are about eight, ten businesses here. And starting from education, gaming, to like social entrepreneurship, um, consultancy, okay, furniture production, interior design, and media, like the Forbes magazine is based here, and also some other, you know, the online, uh, so they are also an online uh, social um, platform. So, especially the media, the media has, has quite knows very well. They suffer immediately because all the, you know, the big advertisers, their budget been just cut. Mm -hmm. and they, they, just, they just cut and they block the money. So, instead of just everyone, every single one of our, you know, a small environment to start thinking of okay, how can I survive? Uh, even we even got once this is something for you a happy hour. We've got a happy hour on Friday each other uh, Friday. So this happy hour everybody's having a drink <laughs> and we're having an online happy hour. 
Yes. Which I did with Corona beer the first one. <laughs> Just for a laugh. There was somebody with cocktail, my business partner, I think she was with Mojito. Anyway, so whatever you like. And we just we just discuss, okay, guys, so how everybody's coping, what you're doing. And uh, then we decided, and that's uh, our, by the way, first anniversary is on 23rd, because it's Missio 23, the creative hub, you know, I'm based in. So 23rd of April is our first anniversary, and we're going to have a big party. But it's not just about the party and people really can have a kind of spirit to lift up the spirit. But we set up a platform, online platform, because uh, we, pus- I mean, this was kind of the latest stage of, of, of our business plan and strategy. But we br- just brought it you know, uh, we just advance it, move it, move it, move it the front, just because it's needed. And we we set it up a studio. Everybody can use for webinars, can can use it for presentations, for online discussions, for streaming. So we had also our own streaming now. So and this helped the people in the other uh, companies to think, okay, how to use it. And we are using it together. So we are sharing expenses. And we are working being, you know, remotely. So, and I think this is what everybody should think. Okay, let's help, as you, as once you said, the local guys, like the local shops. So let's help our social environment in order for for all of us to 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 really to 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 manage or to get through all this and to get stronger. So, back to the Eurovision. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was like, uh, you know, the shock lasted probably, oh, can I say, 48 to 72 hours maximum, like three days. And my main concern was, of course, our artist. So the... the, the I'm going to have to wind with... it back for the viewers because many people will not appreciate that you sponsored the wonderful Victoria uh, to be Bulgaria's Eurovision Song contest yeah. star, hopefully to win it and bring it <laughs> home for Bulgaria. And, but, and but, so you yeah. put a lot of energy into that creative process. Oh, I know. Absolutely. And I uh, told you Creative Hub, Creative Hub, Mister Twenty Three. Yes. And I also told you, and you know me, I do believe in creative industries a lot mm. because coming from a small country like Bulgaria, uh, you cannot cope uh, based on a scale just because you are small you know, yeah. best resource and everything by, by, on default, by default. So, so in this, you can, you, can, you can compete when you add value to different services or different products. So uh, there was, I mean, I was kind of fed up of listening that Bulgaria is number one outsourcing destination or BSOs for Europe, etc. So, and I said, okay, guys, let's start creating our own brands, our own products. And that's why these creative industries, we focus on creative industries. And I told you some of our partners in Missia 23. So, for example, the gamers, because the gaming is very, you know, I mean, I think they are the only one making money these days, by the way. They are having growth these days <laughs> because everybody's staying and trying to do something or streaming or like, you know, you're probably watching Netflix. I mean, the view, you're watching more Netflix or HBO and you're also listening to Spotify a lot, you know, or to Apple Music, depend, you know, if you have Apple product. So, so the life become like this. So there is a need for this creative product. And that's why we initiated this project, which is called uh, Createch, it's more Createch Hub, Missia 23, in uh, which we were targeting the, the creative industry. So we started spotting talents. And I love music, so my, my passions are sport and music because I'm a mad sports supporter, but this is something new and one knows <laughs> that is related to England and my husband is British, so it's mad football supporter. Hello, so, John. <laughs> I <don't>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the other part, music, I started thinking, why Bulgaria never had an international pop star? Hmm. I mean, we really sing, I mean, we have beautiful musicians, beautiful singers, but just locally, just domestically. Okay, let's let's show to the world. I mean, look how what our neighbors are doing, and um, so so that's Victoria was. Uh, I mean, I was tracing her like two three years ago, and she's from my hometown. So it was like a immediate uh, kind of 
bonding from the same settlement when I was growing up, you know, tw- I mean, more many years ago. Is that Varna Way, near Varna? Sorry? Is that Varna Way? Varna, it's Varna, yeah. The it is Varna, Varna, yes, I remember. Yeah, it's Varna. Right. And uh, so one of our partners, who is the creative hub in Manchester called uh, The Landing, and the music label there when so i pitched to them and they said wow that's a i mean okay let's do it and then we just pitched to the national television and i think national television really was happy to see that there are some crazy keen guys who are who are interested to bring eurovision back to to bulgaria because bulgaria and eurovision <clears throat> is the only competition <clears throat> excuse me where bulgaria can really show its potential and be one of the best and there are not so many platforms Unfortunately, I hope to be more and more that Bulgaria can be one of the best, you know, and really competing and being. And, and the results, you know, we somehow we won Eurovision 2020 without competing. So we might be doing something good. I mean, you know, the Dutch guys uh, tell, told this, Times Magazine told this in UK. So, you know. <laughs> well done. Amazing. <laughs> It's and good to win something without having to go into a competition. To go. And, more, and I'm just finishing, but more on this, you know, there were many guys who were just calling me and said, I'm so sorry, Jen, you know, there's no Eurovision 2020, you know, I'm so sorry. You know, you did put all these efforts. And I was just picking the phone, said, okay, okay, thank you very much for your concern, but I'm, I'm okay, <laughs> so don't worry, I'm okay. I just have one more year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's yes, great yes. exposure. I mean, why to be sorry for that? I don't have two more months till May. I have one more year. And we can develop and bring even more music from Bulgaria and Bulgaria to be in the spotlight. Mm. So I think this is the kind of thinking and approach I was telling you in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, no. Well, that's fantastic work. I think having a creative hub. I totally agree with you with the creativity and the quality of people. On uh, uh, sorry, just giving my personal view here, for, if you don't mind, on on our app factory business where we sure. we make mobile applications uh, for a variety of clients, uh, including UK. But you know, even this background screen, we have an in-house designer, Alex. Thank you, Alex, for doing that. Uh, he, he, we've got so much talent, and interestingly enough, we set it up how my partner and I like to work, which is remotely. So whilst we do have an office. No one goes into it apart from once a week when we're there. So we've always operated this way. It's quite amusing, really. We feel as if the world is copying us. <laughs> so we've always I done just, this stuff. Um, something I'd like to, yeah. to jump in and add, yeah, by the way, um, in, in my capacity as a small business person, tall, small business person, is um, you know, I've lived in this country for about 18 years, and we've heard from a succession of governments of different kinds about how e-government is coming, e-government is coming, e-government is coming. And one of the, I think, the positive side effects of this crisis is the very fact that they've really had to move very fast to actually provide e-government for the sake of public health. Uh, the fact that now you can register as unemployed online without having to go and stand in the queue because they don't want people to go and stand in the queues. Uh, you know, financial statements, they still have to do something about that because they've postponed the deadline for submitting financial statements uh, by companies to June the 30th. It would have been much earlier. Uh, but the thing is, you know, we still, financial statements are, are delivered as hard copies. So my accountant, who represents several companies, wonderful accountant, by the way, uh, either he or an assistant has to go and stand in a long queue every year to submit these financial statements. And I think we're going to see the end of that, that it will all be boiled down to a PDF and it will go online in many other ways and also you know perhaps a national revenue agency uh, you know I'm registered to deal with them electronically but to uh, deal with your taxes electronically you need to go to an office and fill in a paper form with a pen yeah. um, and hopefully that's also uh, that will be be done with and you'll be able to do it all online as well but all of that said we have in the past few weeks actually I think seen pretty rapid responses about the number of services where you can engage with governments um, and state institutions and agencies online rather than uh, going there physically. And that already is, again, still to my point of efficiency and um, reduction of waste of time. That is a long-term benefit, I think, that will come out of all of this. So this is e-government. I've got... This is e-government. I've got a question. and It's linked to e-government, but I'm going to call it e-commerce. 
which many people are saying, I just read this morning, there's a view out there that e-commerce has been accelerated by five years, maybe 10 years because of this crisis. So we've all been thrust, as Plyde has been saying, government who absolutely categorically said just a month ago, you cannot do that, we can't do this. All of a sudden, of course, they can. Um, so uh, the question is, is, given that we now know the world has changed in terms of uh, e-commerce, um, do any of us have some uh, ideas to help people in that? Because on one hand, we've got e-commerce that's dominated, not in Bulgaria, but globally by Amazon. Uh, mm -hmm. Am Amazon are doing incredibly well. I mean, I just saw some of their uh, uh, statistics, you know, medicine sales up over 800%, dog food 900%, hand soap 500%, chips 376%. Um, <laughs> uh, they may have come up with some antitrust uh, issues, but there's no doubt about it that people uh, who want to get this global audience uh, probably have to play uh, the likes uh, with the likes of Amazon if they're uh, in the e-commerce game. They may not have to if they want to do this local piece and set up a local hub and support each other. But I'm throwing out the other side of the story, uh, yeah. which frankly is so dominated by Amazon. It's it's quite difficult. With, incidentally, if you don't know this, here in Bulgaria there is no um, direct Amazon. You can order from the from Germany, UK, wherever, and get it shipped in. Um, so I just wondered, you know, with retail. Uh, they've had a 60% just in March alone, 60% drop in footfall. So the, the shops that we see down our high streets everywhere um, are going to probably look different. We're hearing, you know, even the big players like Sears in the US, they're on the brink of collapse. Um, so what we're actually going to see is going to change, including here in Bulgaria probably, because habits, um, we may be slow to go back to go into a crowded uh, crowded um, uh, nightclub or very busy bar or restaurant. <laughs> we may be a little bit tentative to do that, I suspect. Um, yeah. But I just wonder whether you had any thoughts because a lot of people do have these small businesses that do rely on footfall. And, um, you know, whether you uh, had any thoughts about that, what they can um, uh, what they can think. I mean, we're all – you've got a physical office there, uh, I, I, I know, but many people working from home. But then, of course, people do need a, a, some sort of shop. And I'm, and they've got some peculiar challenges, haven't they, really, right now? I'm just wondering whether you've got any thoughts on, on what they can be doing to um, increase their business. Should they go to e-commerce? Should they be getting, uh, getting sites, websites done and, and doing deliveries? Uh, well, any, any thoughts on that? So I'll probably... Two advices, if I can, if I may say advices, but uh, once you are completely right, because I think I'll give you an example. Our Bulgarian IKEA, uh, the online trade increased by 40% the last month. Okay, it's a small percentage comparing to the physical sales, but 40% the last month. So that shows you, you know, just to, just yes. to confirm what you're saying, but it's really the online wow. sales. Uh, they are really booming. And also, with these sales, we're just... I think the people start believing that the world is really a small place. So mm. now the global world is a small place. So you can be, like now we are speaking, also people having all these meetings on different uh, programs and platforms. They can see that we, we can be very productive and as a quite set efficient if we're working distantly, remotely, and... Uh, we can do much more. So I think online sales in different forms, uh, people, I mean, they won't waste, I mean, okay, they would like to go to a local shop probably. But I think it's more efficient if you focus on this uh, segment because as the examples are showing, it's really growing segment. But I would like also to point out something else. And this is the power of streaming. So streaming in different ways, like, I'm expecting to, to make a lot of money out of this Eurovision songs, guys. I mean, that's mm. why I'm doing it, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, if you cannot imagine all the Spotify money, all this million of streams, so you have any just generating income. So this could be not just with a song, but with all type of creative products. 
who could be strained in the, you know, if people can interpret it this way. But I think the business from this direction is getting stronger. And as you both said, like the e the e commerce, you know, it's 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 coming closer. Okay, it's coming faster. Just because we realize that we we need it, and we are. I mean, we've been wasting hell of a lot of time for traveling, and you know, on this all up in the air on the meetings. Like, I'm sure that next time I will think twice if I need to jump on a plane because I was just been previously jumping on a plane. Yeah. So, but I hope to meet you once, not just here. I'm to meet you and on the plane to Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> you know what I mean? So, all these type of services, okay, online, but also streaming services getting very powerful. I mean, my business partners in Ustereo from Manchester, they are making a hell of a lot of money of just streaming music. It's not mm. CDs, it's not vin vin uh, vinyl, it's streaming. Yeah, yeah, no, good, very good point. Clive, do you have any points, apart from the obvious, that we're, we're putting this on the Sofia Globe and well, uh, uh, boosting the content, let's hope, of your wonderful publication? Well, I want to throw a business idea out there for free, anybody who wants it. Uh, you know, Back in the 1960s, when I was I was a child, um, there were still uh, pharmacies that uh, delivered to the house, and uh, they had uh, chaps who were employed on electric scooters. So if you were particularly ill and you needed a prescription filled or you needed anything, you could phone the pharmacy, and they would send around the delivery chap on a on a motorcycle. Um, and if you think about it, you know from the long term because a lot of the hygienic procedures and so forth disinfection procedures it'd be wonderful to see them continued and the, the very fact you know by definition many people who go to pharmacy are already ill and the membership's a place to contain that now but if you actually had a delivery service now uh, again to be you know nice and eco about all of this the difference between the 1960s because that service has long since disappeared is that we do now have the light electric scooter so if somebody wants to get a bunch, get through the bunch of, of light electric scooters, make deals with pharmacies, because it is a little bit different from delivering anything else. Um, you're going to have to have those hygienic procedures throughout. But uh, I think that's that's the kind of idea that people should be looking into. That's a very it, Oh, we've slightly well, lost his boutiques. Yes, please. You go go for it. Yep. That's the last thing. And yes. I think also the probably third thing, the third direction is all these bespoke mm -hmm. innovative products. As mm -hmm. I mentioned, also in the hotels now, you know, the hotels, now they are reconsidering buying all the goods from Asia or to source from Far East. Mm -hmm. They prefer to source now more, mm -hmm. you know, the more, more locally and also more into the environment. So, so I think this is a great advantage. Like I'll give you an example. One of the deal we we lost one year ago, and it's a it's a big deal. It's a canopy by Hilton, one of the latest brands of Hilton. Now they're coming back to us just because all the deliveries were from China. So, mm -hmm. so now they prefer. For it to, but to be both now by the end of the year, and they'll then so locally means in the union. So I think this could address their quietude and bespoke product to into you know to to them definitely benefit. Like who tells now, especially. Those who are close to the hospitals, there's beds for for the people, you know, because it's much better to be in a hotel room than in a hospital room. Mm. So that's that's how the innovative approach of hotels, you know, working these days. And yeah. also, what I do believe in my industry, in my main industry, because I've got, as you said, many different businesses running, is that we need to think again innovatively, being innovative and creative into like doors without handles. So how to be open remote okay only with gadgets because we need as Clive said I, the hygiene culture will definitely arise mm. so we will really look more mm. about the hygiene generally in the spaces we are you know I mean also in the toilets in the on the airport etc so all this 
all these innovative technologies we can apply for open, no, handless doors or whatever, just to open like this, more electronic, I think. In this business is also, these people who start doing it now, they'll be really, they're gonna be great after the crisis when it's all over. So you, we need to think more, as we all said in the beginning. And we have more time for this now, so let's use it to think and to be innovative and creative. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to try and wrap up some of the themes we've had. Just on the last point was um, think that not everybody wants stuff made in China. There may be some localism there. Uh, so think about that. Maybe you want to make some cool masks. You've got some capacity at home and a sewing machine. You know, get to it. Um, I know someone very close to me here who bought a very fancy uh, mask online. You know, so people are doing this sort of thing. Uh, but there's lots, I think there's lots and lots of good ideas uh, out there. But I think to unleash your inner entrepreneurial star, I think it's key to talk to other people, to uh, accumulate uh, online. Funny enough, you, at your point, I laughed at your, your happy app. I did something very similar with a bunch of friends. Some of them had their own businesses, and we had uh, 12 of us uh, on uh, Webby. I use this app. Um, it's uh, like Zoom, but I think a bit better. But yeah, uh, I think try and get a few friends and friends of friends to chew over some ideas um, because I've learned something from you already, uh, uh, from you both actually. And the more you seem to talk like this, I almost think we're getting more time to do it. It's bizarre. Yes. And you think <laughs> yeah. it's weird. We we took this crisis for us to to think of good ideas. Maybe. Yeah. Hmm. So, Clive, I just want you to just do a, 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 just like a one-minute uh, snapshot of some of the things happening. Uh, the stats came out on marriage length in Bulgaria. Now, <laughs> will this go up or down after? <laughs> it's 15.9 years. 15.9 years, yes. It's, it's apparently fairly stable, which I find very funny. No, but that's statistics, you know, yes, uh, <clears throat> but uh, last year the number of marriages went up uh, by 200 something, the number of divorces went up by the same number, um, and the, the number population of, children, of Bulgaria, sorry to interrupt, but population of Bulgaria uh, dropped, stats, just yeah. dropped below 7 million officially, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we've been, I mean, we've been expecting that, but uh, it's now officially confirmed as of uh, New Year's Eve last year, it was uh, 6.9 million something, uh, started out as well more than 7 million to 2011. But bear in mind, you know, this this year could also change the, the, those things. Uh, there have been Bulgarians who've come back from abroad because of the crisis. Um, there are any number of factors that could, that could still change uh, in terms of people literally coming and going. So um, if you're in Chicago right now, dear Bulgarian, uh, or somewhere in the US paying $3,000 a month rent, mm -hmm. If you've got a business that could be set up here in Bulgaria or indeed is in global, international business, you may want to think about coming back to your home country or indeed mm -hmm. whatever nationality you are and paying some high rent and your landlord is a, uh, uh, perhaps thinking of, uh, or you're struggling to pay the mortgage maybe now. Uh, there are ways of reducing your expenses and we didn't really talk about that, but it is a real serious point, frankly. Yes. Uh, there's one point that actually Genevieve made without making it is that actually she'd run her business conservatively to have a cushion of cash so that she mm. could continue paying people uh, I'm again sorry to shill my own efforts but we've done the same um, so we've kept up the same headcount and everybody's getting paid in full um, so you know don't over leverage your business yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. unless it seems you're one of the mates of the people who run countries they uh, buy their own stock and shares and uh, leverage their businesses to the hilt because they feel they're too big to fail. Now, that's political, mm. uh, but we won't talk about that. It seems that way at any rate. Um, we'll see how that all goes. Uh, but um, I'm going to just wrap this up to, uh, to thank you so much, Genevieve, for being our special guest. But, I mean, I've just, there's so many tips mm. here. We'll try and put them in the show notes. And uh, it's been great chatting. I think there's so much more we can all do. Uh, I, as I say, you've given me some ideas. Um, just talking about things really helps, doesn't it? Yes. I think it does. And um, finally, of course, to Clive, uh, doing the wonderful work on Sophia Globe. Not only read it, but support Clive and his uh, team there. Uh, look, 
independent media never needed more than now, folks. There's lots of interesting regulations that are coming out. Will they be retracted once the crisis is over? You know, someone needs to be pointing out and keeping people honest. Uh, but Clive does need your support, please, on the patient account uh, from just three euros per month. A bargain for all that content and some exclusive content. Is that correct, Clive? That's correct. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, put up uh, a uh, review and assessment of the first year. Uh, God, first year, first month of this. It first felt like a year. First month of the state of emergency. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Because today is indeed the first uh, the first month from March the 13th to April 13th, and one more month to go. Yeah, Particularly yeah. if everybody behaves and is responsible and does what they're asked to do, uh, just one more month to go. Unlike some, check the latest story uh, on uh, mm -hmm. on the Sofia Globe. Um, we're going to call that a day. But just finally, to say, you dear watcher uh, of this uh, show, have you got any good ideas? Can you, anything you can help people who are watching this, put your comments down below. Uh, Genevieve, I'm going to talk on behalf of you, but you will personally give some tips to people if they have some questions uh, in the YouTube channel. And so my just, pleasure. Pleasure. And, uh, you know, help each other, be good to each other, don't get depressed, there's, there's opportunity in times of crisis. So thanks a lot, guys. For watching, thank you, Clyde, again, Genevieve. We'll see you on the next one. Have a lovely week.